Hello everyone, and welcome to Ethereal Echoes of Yore, a new game in the making inspired by old school MMORPGs like RuneScape, Tibia and many other MMOs. Set on the lands of Iramesa, you have to uncover secrets, explore new lands, fight fearful monsters, master the magical arts, build your home and craft your own equipment. Today we are going to talk about some of the basic day one game mechanics and tutorials. Now you do have to keep in mind that the footage shown is from the alpha stages of the game's development. So many things could and will change thanks to the feedback of the community. If you have never heard or tested the game yourself, then this video is definitely meant for you. First off we will discuss the character creation system. Then I will show you how the backstory works. And finally show you some of the basic things you need to learn when you play the game yourself. Now by the time this video is online, the Kickstarter for the game should have started. If it has, then I will share the link in the, in the description down below and also in the comments together with the YouTube channel of the creators of the game, their Discord server and their Steam page of course. Be sure to wishlist the game on Steam and let's get on with the video. So to start off with the character creation system for an alpha, I think it is doing really well in giving you plenty of different options to choose from. Different options for your uh, hair, for scars on your face, for a beard, for clothing on different parts of your body to start off with. Of course, these clothing won't do anything for your stats. Like they don't give you any armor points or anything like that. It's purely cosmetic for when you are not wearing any armor. But of course, they will expand upon this. They have already said that in the Discord as well. And I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with that in, uh, in a year from now. When the game officially releases in April 2023. With all the different colors and beards and clothing that you can choose from. And I think the design for all of this is also pretty cool looking. Now, of course, once the Kickstarter starts and they have some more funding to uh, do more with the visuals in the game uh, of any type, then this might completely change. But we will see what happens. I think they've already done a great job on, uh, on this simple yet elegant system. Now, after you have created your character, you will get a, a backstory that will create your character and its beginning statistics and abilities. So there will be like a whole role playing story, a background to play through, uh, telling, giving you a couple of different options to choose from. For example, in the first option, you will get the option to either immediately face the enemy head on or to, uh, to contemplate on your next move. The first one being more melee focused and the second one being more ranged or supportive. And depending on which one you choose, you will get a completely different story in the end. With all kinds of different statistics and spells and abilities for your character. Now as you can see, I have chosen the uh, side of the mage here a little bit more. I went to face the enemy head on by charging into the battle. And then I chose to manipulate the ley lines, preparing for magical energy to unleash upon your foes. And next I chose the option that will give me a solid blade of ice in my hand. So even though you go the magic route, you can still do melee. You can literally summon weapons like an icy great sword and do a tremendous amount of damage that way. Now, it might feel very important to choose the correct ones in the beginning, but have no fear because once you are in the game, you can always choose to go for something else. You can sell off your, uh, your weapons and gear that you do not need, or you can just switch out your abilities that you don't want to use anymore. And then in the, uh, in the game, you will be able to go to traders or find new spells and abilities hidden throughout the world you can craft your own armor or, or buy it of course from traders around the world as well or other players it will of course take some time to go from one play style to another but it is definitely possible to choose something like a mage in the backstory and then switch to a melee character like 10 hours into the game or 20 hours into the game but it will of course take some more time to get to the same power level as you were with that 20 hour in mage for example. 
Now this backstory right now, it is very small in comparison to what they want to do with it. This is once again just an alpha stage kind of test. Just to show us what they want to do with it and uh, how, they, how they imagine the game to be in the end. So all these choices will become much greater and maybe some more clarity to which option does what exactly. Then you will be able to choose the name for your character. And then you can also choose your world, a server in which you want to play. Now, right now in the alpha stages of the game, you will be able to create multiple characters for the same server. But as is my understanding, later on when the full game releases, you will be able to create one character for one server. So uh, in this example, I choose Sweden 2, for example. Uh, if I make this character during the full release, I will not be able to create another character for the same server. That is at least my understanding of how they want it to be. There will also be no uh, character swapping to another server. That is something that they uh, do not like to have in their game. And the reason for that being is the whole infamy system that they have in the game implemented as well. Killing other players will grant you a certain amount of infamy. And not only does it give you infamy in the game and how NPCs might react to you, like guards chasing you and throwing you into jail, they really want your reputation as a player to matter in this game. So switching between servers with the same character is something they, uh, they prefer not to do. And I don't think their mind will change on that either. And then once you have finally confirmed your character creation and you are happy with the server you choose, whether it be a PvP server or a PvE server, you can choose both in the final version of the game. Then you will arrive in a uh, little tutorial island that will explain you some of the basics of the game. You have access throughout the entirety of the game to a uh, tutorial sort of journal where you can read up on some of the game rules and mechanics of the game. The first one being quite important is the way you interact with other NPCs. You can literally or you have to chat with other NPCs in order to, uh, to get anywhere or to get something from them. So if you want to talk to an NPC, then all you have to do is you have to walk up to them, say hi or hello or uh, hey, for example, and then they will open and then you will open up a, a dialogue with that NPC. They will ask you what you want, if you want to trade, yes or no, for example. Uh, those yes or no will in most cases be highlighted in their text bubble and you can click on the yes or on the no. Or you can, once again, type it out on your keyboard, yes or no, if that's what you want. You can also ask them for help, for quests, or if you want to know a specific thing about the game, uh, for example, where to find, I don't know, like, uh, like mages, you can ask them something like that. Now, of course, this system is being worked on heavily and is not perfect yet. And not all NPCs have knowledge about everything in the game either. You cannot expect a simply farmer to know everything about the creation of legendary armor, for example. So, sometime, so sometimes to get a quest, you do have to find, of course, a specific NPC that actually knows something related to that quest because they either live nearby or they are involved in something missing, for example. I think this is a really interesting and unique way to play the game. And I am uh, all for it. I, I really like the way it all works. Of course, it is still alpha and um, I'm sure they will change some things about it. But I have no doubt that this will be a, a great system and a role playing sort of aspect of the game. Now, once you have interacted with these NPCs, for example, a trader, as you can see on the footage, you can uh, you can get a window of the vendor and you can drag all the windows everywhere you want as well. So if you rather have the vendor window on the left side or the right side or somewhere in the middle, then you can just uh, click and drag that all across the screen. 
Now, as of right now, and I don't think this will change in the future, the game does, in theory, support higher resolutions or greater uh, screens, monitors, because they do not wish to give uh, those players an unfair advantage by being able to see more of the world on their screen. There will just be, uh, most likely anyway, just black screens on the side. But what you could do is you could place these vendor windows instead of in your main world screen covering everything up. You could put the vendor window, for example, in the top left corner where there used to be a black screen there because of your uh, monitor size. The same can be done with your backpack and your inventory, skills, stats, uh, probably and hopefully with the journal and the notes as well. Right now, as it is, you cannot change where the uh, notes and the journal will be on your screen. Uh, but I hope they will change it to so that you can uh, drag that around. The buying of weapons and other things from vendors is a little bit tricky. Or not the buying, I should say, but the selling of items. If you want to sell items to a NPC, then you have to really go to the specific vendor that wants to buy that thing from you. Even though you're going to a weapons handler, that doesn't mean that he will uh, that he will buy every single weapon off of you. Just because you're going to a weapons handler in the beginning of the game, doesn't necessarily mean he wants to buy a legendary weapon off of you. Maybe he does not have the cash for it, or he just doesn't have the clientele to sell it to. Also, the economy of the world is also ba very heavily based on the players. So, for example, um, the shop might run out of a certain type of sword. There are only five swords available at a time, and with a maximum up to 20, but they will only get supplied five at a time, for example. Meaning, if other players buy those swords then you will have nothing but what you could also do instead of being the one buying those swords you could be the one supplying those swords to that vendor meaning you can create like 10 or 15 or 20 of those swords and you can sell them five at a time or 10 at a time to that same vendor and create a lot of revenue that way and also earn the respect and the reputation of those traders those traders will get to know you and respect you. <clears throat> and I believe this will also affect uh, how they interact with your character later on in the game. By maybe giving you a different mission or maybe a discount or a buff on when you're selling things to them. Now as you have seen by now the game is style based and so will the combat be. Some spells for example will only go up or left or right or down. So you have to walk around with your character accordingly to make sure your spells and abilities will actually hit the enemy if they are diagonally um, next to you then you will not be able to hit them with those specific spells so you're gonna have to walk up or to the side and then turn around a little bit towards them so that you can actually hit them with it diagonal movement and abilities might come to the future but that is not yet confirmed. Now there are a couple of spells that have tracking to them. So not all spells and abilities. You have to uh, line them up correctly. Some spells like, uh, like certain arrows or magic abilities for example. They will have some sort of tra auto tracking to them. So you just have to highlight an enemy and then the spell will automatically hit them for example. All of these abilities will be listed in your uh, in your spell book that you see in the lower right corner of the screen. It will have a uh, it will have a list of all the different kind of abilities that you have learned so far, and then you can just click and drag them to your hotbar in the middle there. You can also change this hotbar so if you rather not have your spells be on uh, on the numbers like one two three four five, you can set them to uh, to to J K L O P for example. You could just put them to random letters on your keyboard, or if you have something special like a gaming mouse. I believe you will be able to set them to those as well. 
I have not tested this, of course, um, but I believe that is possible. You can edit that hotbar pretty well with those uh, three little stripes there next to the hotbar. That's like the, uh, the options there, the settings that you can edit the hotbar with. Now, I might do a separate smaller video about tiny little things like that, where I can show it off a little bit better when I have access to the game once more. Now, usually when I play this game, I tend to play in just one camera angle but it is possible to change your camera angle uh, it being a tile based game um, you can only you can only change it by 90 degrees and you can do so per default by holding your middle mouse button down and then just dragging your mouse across the screen from left to right to go around your character it is also possible to bind keys on your keyboard to that if you prefer that that is definitely possible and i believe they were also implementing a way to uh, invert the way it does it so if you don't want to swipe from left to right to change the camera angle towards the right angle but if you rather have left to right be changing the camera angle to the left for example then that will be um, to my understanding anyway an option in the future as well personally i have not played a lot of mmorpgs so i don't really know a lot of the terms for it but the, the fighting in the game is a, the, the targeting is sort of a tap targeting so you press tap in your keyboard and then it will uh, like highlight an enemy within distance and you can tap once more to change to another enemy that's also within distance or you can just simply um, left or right click on an enemy on the screen with your mouse of course if that's what you prefer and then once you get close enough to attack with the auto attack with your weapon you will uh, you will automatically start attacking or if you want to use spells from your hotbar you can stay at a distance of course and uh, cast those depending on the range of your spells you will regenerate health and mana over time but this is quite slow as it is right now to make sure that you get the most out of your health regeneration and mana regeneration you have to make sure that you eat every now and then get yourself a well-fed buff and this will greatly help out there will also be different uh, probably clothing and necklaces and enchantments in the game that will uh, buff these as my understanding. Also things like alchemy will be added to the game. I have not played with that one just yet but I do know that alchemy and tailoring of uh, clothing for example will be added to the game. Now as far as leveling up your character goes and uh, getting new spells and abilities as i explained earlier there are hidden abilities and uh, spells that you can get throughout the game by going to a specific area in the map and finding uh, finding the secrets and the information you need to get that spell so far i think i have only found one during the alpha testing of the game and there are set to be uh, many more so i'm excited to find those out but now during the alpha testing of the game you will uh, you will get certain spells and abilities at uh, at levels so if you reach level 5 or 10 15 20 you will get a spell but also if you reach a certain skill level so for swords fighting for example or for mages cryomancy for example so if you are part of the next test and you're playing the game then you will, will probably get spells every now and then when you uh, level up to 5 or 10 15 20 etc now the level at which you level up right now the amount of xp for your character and the amount of xp for your uh, skill levels is highly increased during this playtest so that the people have a chance to experience some more of the spells and get a feel for the game but the experience gained in the final version of the game will be a lot less uh, will be a lot less according to the developers there are ways to afk train as well however afk training at a dummy level 5 will not give you as much xp as fighting an actual enemy and it also has just like fighting regular enemies diminishing returns so if you are a level 10 character with a level 10 skill in swords fighting and you're hitting a training dummy with your sword then you will probably not get that much xp 
However, if you go over to the outside world and fight a couple of rats or wolves or stuff like that, you will probably get double or triple maybe the XP. I do not know the exact numbers, but I do know that fighting regular enemies in the outside world will grant you a lot more XP, but both of those will have diminishing returns. So if you are constantly fighting spiders, uh, then eventually you will start earning less XP from them. So you're gonna have to move on to fighting wolves, for example, which are a step up in, uh, in power and health. So it will take a little bit more effort, but it will grant you more XP from them as well. And that's how the game is going to be played. You're going to start off fighting rats and spiders and then you're going to move on to wolves. And then a little later on you're going over to goblins or actual humanoid enemies as well like bandits for example. Now while you are fighting these enemies you also have a couple of dip different options. You can for example loot them of course just like any other game. You can just right click them and loot them, get the, get the stuff from their inventory, put it in your backpack. You also have the ability to uh, maybe if you have a skinning knife you will be able to skin the pelt of a wolf and use that for leather working. But in a lot of cases, if you hold control and right click, you will also have the option to research the enemy. For example, researching spiders or wolves will let you know how much health they got, how, strength, how strong they are, what the drop rate is of the meat and the pelts that you uh, gather and skin from them, for example, and also their weaknesses. So you won't know their weaknesses right away unless you experiment with different spells and weapons of course. You will you can kind of gather from that. Uh, as you kill more you will automatically know more about the enemy too. But if you specifically research them after you killed them then you will get a lot more research done on that type of enemy. Now there is a lot more to talk about in this game. This is, I'm not, I'm not, haven't even scratched the surface of the game as of right now. There is so much content in this alpha already. Um, not per se map size, the size of the map is in this alpha stage of the game quite small. According to the developers, the amount of content and map size is about 1% of what the final game is gonna look like. The alpha is contained to the solitary isles which is only a small part of the uh, the in-game world and during the full release you will be able to go to the mainland of Iramesa which will be filled with a lot more quests, towns and a lot more things to do and I'm really excited about what the final version of the game is gonna look like. I will be making more videos about the game, uh, a, lot of, a lot more guides like this one. If you enjoyed it, then uh, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. Give a like, subscribe to the channel if you uh, are interested and want to see more. I will be covering uh, more things like blacksmithing. I will be covering more things like a mining, refining and blacksmithing video. A hunting, skinning and leather working. And also a video about herbalism, fletching and lumbering. Those are some of the things in the game right now. And in a couple of days I will be able to show you more. Once the game is released on the 29th. Uh, there will be another alpha testing phase. And that is also when the Kickstarter hits. So if you are watching this on the 29th or past the 29th of April 2022. Then there will be a Kickstarter. And I will uh, once again I will share the link down below in the description. And in the comment section when I do have access to that link. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will show some of the other ethereal videos on the screen right now. Once I have uploaded them. And I hope to see you all in game or in their discord. Discussing more about this amazing new game. Thanks for watching. Until next time.